What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gym City Podcast. I'm Izzy Rock. I'm your host and producer for Gym City Podcast. And we release content all about Dayton, Ohio, in the Miami Valley area. And on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we drop new episodes. And today, I'm talking with Mr. Josh Thrasher. How's podcaster, rapper, yes. journalist. I guess you're, you're everything. getting into journalism yeah, now. Yeah, everything. I try to have my hand in a little bit of everything. Yeah, man, right on. So good. tell me, uh, so you just started a podcast recently. Yeah. Tell me about it. Um, I started the, uh, it's called Thrash Talk. Um, I interview all um, local hip-hop artists. And, um, you know, it's just a, a platform where um, they can promote their music, promote um, upcoming shows, um, just get a little backstory for their fans, um, and just, you know, just, you know, just learn kind of what kind of game they might have for us, or what kind of, uh, you know, knowledge they could let us know about, and, you know, um, I kind of modeled it after the, uh, the No Jumper podcast, um, are you, are you familiar with that? It's no, a, not at all. It's a, um, it's basically a hip-hop podcast that they do in L.A., and they do, like, up-and-coming rappers that are, like, about to be um, famous, so yeah. I kind of just took kind of that format and just flipped it with my own, my own flip, so, you know, um, um, that's, that's my goal is just to get, make a platform that people want to come on and, uh, and promote stuff, like if they have an album dropping or if they, you know, or even if they just have a show or even if they just want to come and talk a little bit about their life so that more people can understand where they're coming from and, you know, because it's always good to hear from like the artists that you listen to and kind of get a backstory so you can relate a little bit more. Absolutely, man. And uh, like, uh, I know you were doing content before, but yeah. what, uh, so tell me, what, what have you learned since you started podcasting? Like, oh, so much. Um, just, uh, just how to hold an interview, you know, like to, without having dead, uh, dead air or it getting awkward, you know, I kind of learned how to like BS a little bit more and, and, and just, you know, um, when, well, I mean, once I did like five, it's ba it's basically just the same thing over and over and over again. So it's muscle memory and Absolutely. a lot of the people are my friends because I've been on the scene since like 2012. So like I pretty much know everybody that, you know, I've, uh, there's, there's some people that's, you know, new that pulled up just because they wanted an opportunity, but most of them are my friends that I've known. So it's kind of just like, you know, just talking with your friends about what they're doing with their music. So, and that's the kind of vibe I wanted for it was just chilling with your friends smoking and uh, talking about music yeah man do you so in, in the podcast game now there's yes. you know when when i when we started back in 2013 with jim city podcast there wasn't a whole lot going right. on but right now there's a lot and yeah. um i hope it never feels like competition at all no and I, I hope never with me anybody always feels like they can start a podcast for sure and get their voice out there <laughs> yeah because I think that's important, man. I think in the in the age that we're in, how easy it is to record a podcast, mm -hmm. and it is just sitting around bullshit. It, it is. is just sitting around having a conversation that you would normally have with somebody. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of times we get distracted. We're always on our phones, mm -hmm. and to be able to sit down and have a conversation for an hour, yeah. half an hour. Yeah. Three hours. I've listened to some Joe Rogan episodes. Like yeah, Joe hours. Rogan's uh, usually, uh, and that's another influence. You know, that I, I'll watch pretty much any podcast, but I love Joe Rogan's podcast. He has really good guests, and he's a great interviewer. Yeah, man. It, it, so, pie in the sky. Who, who, who's some goals of uh, people that you want to have on? Um. Let's see. Um. I mean. Um. I mean, there's a there's a lot of people that I I still need to get on. Um. Like uh, C Money for sure, uh, J Dot Easy, J Dot Right, um, Young Chris, um, Jive. Uh, but those are all those are all my brothers, so I can just yeah. you know, so I can just call them up. It just it's just basically when when our schedules link up, you know, because we're all have our own lives and we're all busy, so you know, um, you know, just whenever whenever the time is right, it'll happen. That's right, man. That's right. So. Do you have a timeline? Like, do you have a, like we I record four episodes today, right. yeah. and then we drop them over a series of uh, weeks after uh -huh. that. Do you, uh, which helps me out because you know to go and record podcast every other day 
to release yeah. them, you know, shortly after that, it's rough. It is. It is. I mean, yeah, I mean, I understand that. Especially with, with mine as a video podcast, so I have to, you know, upload it to YouTube, and that takes, you know, like, I just let it go overnight until it's done, you know, because it takes so long with the files and stuff, but, um... Um, I'm sorry. What was what was the uh, what was what was the question? Like, what was the? No, I I, I think just, uh, I I think in general like like um, so oh like the scheduling. Yes. Um, I I kind of just uh, just play it by ear. Sometimes I'll do I I I like to only do one um, per like day or something. But sometimes I'll do like two or three, and then I'll uh, I'll space it out. But I try to do at least one every week or biweekly. Yeah. So not to oversaturate it, but still have enough to where people want to come and 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 shop with me on it, or you know, because I I usually charge forty dollars for it unless um unless we have an agreement um differently than that, but yeah. Yeah, man. So so you charging for people to come on the yeah. podcast? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the second season. Nice. Um, the first season went really well, and I just started the second season, and I'm like three episodes in, or two episodes in, about to drop the third one, um, it's either tonight or tomorrow. Nice. So, yeah. You know, what, what's, so in the, in the podcast world, yeah, that I've been involved with for, for a while, there's some, like, controversy, mm -hmm. like, a podcast on video for a lot of like traditional podcasters would be like, no, it's not a podcast. Right. It's just a show uh, that it's a podcast if it's on ripped and released yeah. on audio for yeah. MP3 or something so like that. that. Yeah. Like an RSS that you can mm -hmm. subscribe. Mm -hmm. for, for me, yeah. like whatever you want to call your show, you right. call your show. But, but what was the decision to do it on video versus audio? Or do you have plans to still do it on audio? Um, I really never thought about doing audio because I've I, I, I've always just done it video. I, mean, I I just I don't know. It's just it's just something that that popped into my head, and it, I felt like it's something that the city needs. You know, like an exclusive. Like this is where you go to get interviewed if you, you know, if, if you're a local rapper. So I kind of want to build up that reputation of that. Um, and the whole video thing came from um, the No Jumper podcast because they do all 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 video. And they don't do any, um, any, any, uh, like Spotify or, you know, or whatever other podcasts drop on with just the MP3 format. So, um, and also I don't have um, multiple microphones for it to sound good, and I wouldn't want to just put my studio microphone in the middle of the table and, you know, do it like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would want to do it something like this where it's actually, you know, a professional thing, but. With the with the camera, I have a you know a little tripod I can just put up on the side and uh and uh it just gets the shot right there and I can just do it all by myself you know I don't need anybody to help me and, and you know I just edit it on my Mac and uh, usually do a 24 hour turnaround if I can that's yeah. usually I'm usually like that with anything even with my music like if if you send me a feature it's a 24 hour turnaround so I try to that's kind of my thing I try to do the 24 hour turnaround just so people aren't waiting. Cause I hate when when I do something and people are like, "When are you dropping this? When are you gonna be dropping this? When are you gonna be dropping this?" So I'm just gonna drop it before they have a chance to, <laughs> you know, complain about it. So yeah, that's that's basically that as far as uh, how I create it. Yeah, I like and I love the explanation of how somebody sets up and records and, and does all that. And I I think video video does it is becoming way more popular. Yeah. Um, with YouTube, with YouTube, with um, you know, like uh, the Breakfast Club. Yeah, the Breakfast like, Club is another one that's a big influence. Yeah, a lot of people will listen to that on their radio, mm -hmm. but there's a whole other element on video. We've just yeah. never done video, just because, like, uh, you know, I was used to doing the audio, and it takes. And you mentioned it takes forever to upload a YouTube like video. Like five, six hours, at least on my internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's bad because you know they're. They're like what, like they end up being like twenty gigs, you know. After you know you you bounce it down and you, you know it's got to be ten eighty p or four k or you know it's gonna look like crap on the <laughs> on the TV or the laptop or your phone. So I just try to give the best quality I can for what I have, and um, yeah, I just I just do it for the artists like me who wish that when I was first starting that I had that, that I could have had a place to come to and like freestyle or talk about my projects or talk about my life you know so 
I kind of just want to, like, kind of when I was when I was doing the whole promotion thing, I kind of wanted it to be kind of like the offset of that, you know, yeah, dude. like a hand in hand type thing. Like, oh yeah, you do promotion and you do a podcast and you rap and you shoot videos, blah blah blah. So you know, I just try to be like anything I can do. Uh, I want to do it for yeah. for hip hop or anything really. Yeah. What What do you think about the state of hip hop? Um, <sighs> Nationally and locally. Okay, well, look, we'll start out nationally, just because I mean, um, I would I would say that um, there's some there's some really good music still being made out there, but um, for the most part, a lot of it's just the same the same you know the same sound. Like you know, you throw auto tune on something, and then you just kind of like pretend to sing and rap. I mean, it's really not like the the whole technical uh form of rapping is not is not around anymore i mean it's all singing or swagging out or you know just your aura on the song it's not based off dope lyrics or punchlines or oh you you can relate this word with this and make a dope concept out of it you know it's not anything like that it's basically just people talking about using drugs and you know sleeping with people's wives and stuff like that. I mean, it's literally the same topic after topic after topic after topic, which is why I really don't listen to a lot of new music. There's there's a few that I like, but as far as, yeah, mainstream hip-hop, and the stuff they play on the radio, I don't even know how you can call it hip-hop, <laughs> to be honest with you. I mean, you know my dad. He, he raised me, you know, Wu-Tang Clan, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, like... De La Soul, like, you know what I mean? Like, classic, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I'm classically trained in hip-hop, so it, it kind of it kind of makes me feel some type of way. It also kind of makes me feel like I'm, like, older because, like, everybody's feeling, like, this type of sound, and I'm like, I mean, it's cool to dance to and stuff, but it's not something I'm just going to be, like, sitting around listening to, you know? Yeah, I feel you. And um, before we move on to uh, local, yeah, um, I, for listeners who don't know, Josh's dad is the great Don Thrasher. Yes, he, he's sir. been involved with the local music scene for for a long time. Long, long time. Way before I was born. He needs to write a book, dude. Uh, that that would be a great idea. I might have to tell him about that. He, he definitely. I mean, he's a writer, you yeah, know. Absolutely. So, I mean, who knows? He might have. He might have. He might have something started. I don't. I don't know. He's really creative, so I don't. I don't know what he's got in store. So I mean, he could. He couldn't. I don't. I don't know. But definitely, he should definitely think about that one day because he's. I mean, he's got crazy stories that he's just told me over the years, you know, so I can only imagine if he would, although he's really private too, so I don't know if he would really want to write a book. Right. Maybe, maybe I'll do that for him one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, j just the amount of people that he's covered and he's seen. Oh, man, like, like legends. Yeah, he's he's played in oh, great played bands. Oh, played in bands, yeah. Play, like, Gotta Buy Voices, you know, Swearing the Motors. Yeah, he needs to write a book. Smug Brothers, yeah. yeah. Don, write a book. It, it, if it's not about his life, he could definitely write a book about um, just how to make music. Yeah. I mean, he's <clears throat> taught me just like so many things, and and he, and he what he never did, he never gave me any handouts or anything. I always had to earn. He he would never just be like, oh, my son's a rapper, so I'm gonna write a story about him. Yeah. For the, 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 the for the Dayton Daily, like he never did that. I don't think he can, if even if he did, he, he wanted to, but he always left it up to me to make my own mark. Like, yeah, dude. And I. And I that because I don't want to just be because I mean people like you like in like your age range you know they know me as Don Thrasher's son as well as like what I do but people my age I mean they don't really know him so it's right you know it's good that I, I, I did that and not just try to live off his name like you know I, absolutely dude and I, I think um, you know I, we talked about it in the other podcast your your last name is like you know a lot of people will come up with these names your yeah. last name is perfect for, exactly didn't have to change yeah, anything dude. Yeah, didn't have to be called little blah 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 <laughs> little orange juice or <laughs> did, did, did you ever have a rap name uh no it's always just been josh thrasher i mean it, i mean you know i mean anytime i would think about doing a rap name everybody would be like bro just use your just use your real name you're blessed with that name so i'm like yeah you're right so it's true just rock with that you know i mean people call me thrash i mean that's like my nickname people just you know it's what's up thrash blah blah, blah 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 so i mean that's probably the closest thing to like a nickname i guess but, yeah yeah but people call me thrasher thrash you know it's 
usually just the uh, family members that call me Josh. So yeah, man. So is there anything that you're listening to nationally that you would want to put people on? Um. Yeah. I mean, there's there's uh, there's still a lot of good artists um, that may not be as popular as um, maybe people that get played on the radio. But I was a big XXX Tentacion fan before he passed. Yeah. Like, still one of my favorite artists because he can play the guitar, play the piano, he can sing, he can rap, um, and he can technically rap, and then he can, you know, do the whole swag rap, and he wasn't just about drugs, he was about, like, um, like, um, helping you through, like, suicide, or, like, helping you through bad times in your life, so I always connected to him because he was an actual artist, and I, I hadn't seen an actual artist in the mainstream in a while, so... That was the artist I liked, but you know he he died about around this time last year. So, um, yeah, he he was good. Um, and then there's just you know I, I enjoy people like Lil Uzi or like um, Twenty One Savage. There there's some of the newer guys I like, but like the newer newer guys I I can't really rock with. <laughs> um, you know I would do business with them, but um, I I. I it's not a big fan musically. It's just not what my palate likes, you know. Unless I'm like wanting to like party or you know that, but that's totally different than just sitting around and zoning out and you know listening to lyrics. So is there it, like anything that you listen to outside of hip hop that people are like, oh man, I'm surprised Josh. Listens oh, outside to that. of hip hop? Oh hell yeah! I mean, um, uh, I was a huge Beatles fan and have been a huge Beatles fan like my whole life, like. I think John Lennon's probably the best songwriter of all time, arguably. So, or yeah, and I mean, I still listen to him. Um, um, I mean, even my dad's music, uh, like "Swearing a Motorist," their their uh, their first album with uh, you know like "Flying Pizza" on it and stuff. That that album was amazing. Um, I still listen to that. Um, um, I like Frank Ocean. He's a good singer. Um, uh, what's some? I know I got some obscure ones for you. Um, I don't know. My dad's the, to turn me on to so many. Like <laughs> he used to make me uh, mixtape, like cassette mixtapes when I was a yeah, little kid, man. and I had a Walkman, and I would just I would keep keep the tapes in the Walkman everywhere I went, and it would just be you know different genres. He would like he would switch it up. Like he would do like a Beatles song, then he would do like uh, like some kind of like. African like chant or something, you know, like, like you know what I mean, like, and then he'll follow that up with like, um, I, I, I like an old school hip hop song. So he always just had different genres, different genres, just throwing it at me, getting my subconscious at an early age. So, I mean, I, I love all music, and um, really, country is the only thing that I really can't. This this country right now, country country music right now, I can't really get with. Do you find it odd that uh, one of the top songs it, Old in Town the world is a country rap song? I I, I, I don't. <laughs> when I heard that song, and it, I think even to this day, I'm still confused. Because, <laughs> like, it is hip hop and it is country, but, like, I, I, I don't really know. If, what chart it belongs on? Maybe just pop. Just I, pop. I don't think that I, I don't think that it should just be country or just hip hop because there there's probably more hip hop to, like tones to it than it is country. Yeah. And a lot of I mean there's other hip hop songs that didn't blow up as much as that that um, that um, do that like that have the whole. I mean, do you remember like maybe ten years ago there was a cowboy. Ch or something yeah, yeah. like that. I mean, I just knew he was always like a punchline. Like, you know, nobody took him serious. You know, and um, I just feel like it was in that kind of vibe. But I'm not gonna hate on the dude for you know finding a finding a way to work the system for him to blow up because I guess he blew up on SoundCloud because he put his song in the country category. So he was on the country charts on SoundCloud. So he kind of tricked it because. If he would have did hip hop, he would probably would have been like all down there. But since he did country, he shot all the way up because there's not a lot of country artists on SoundCloud. Yeah. So he kind of messed with the algorithms and had it go in his favor, and that's how he took off. It's kind of genius. Actually. It is genius. Yeah, man. And I respect that about him. But the whole the song, I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool that he did like the whole Billy Ray Cyrus remix. Yeah. But I feel like he had to. I feel like that's all politics, you know. Yeah, man, definitely. 
Um, and if you pull up country rap on Google, there's all these artists that I've kind of yeah. heard of. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a whole, yeah. Like Colt Ford, it said back in 2008. I don't know this dude. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Big Smo in 2014. I've, I've opened up for him Big Smo before, yeah. <laughs> Bubba Sparks. I've opened up for Bubba Sparks, too. <laughs> uh, it looks like Kid Rock is probably the oldest one back in Oh, yeah. Kid Rock. He had yeah. Too Short write his first rap album, and then he kind of like went to the whole mixing, mm -hmm. matching. I, I, I was never a big Kid Rock fan. <laughs> no, yeah, but I, I've seen him live. Even I heard he's a good live guy. Great live, yeah. man. Like, it, it puts on one hell of a show. I've been, I've been an active listener to his in a very long time, but yeah. it, it, it's just funny to see that kind of, that finally break to the mainstream. Yeah. And it was bound to happen, I mm -hmm. suppose, but um, it, it is weird. With the internet. Yeah. yeah. Now, locally, uh -huh. we, um, I, I think we would do local hip-hop and local rap a disservice if we didn't uh, speak on Mike Lansky and oh, man. the tragedy that it Shout is to lose Mike. a local legend that, I mean, should, like, it, there's so many great artists just waiting to burst yeah, and to that next level. He was one of them. Yeah. I only had, I only had a chance to meet him about a couple times, uh, but I, I had booked him. Um, in Cincinnati at Mad Frog, and uh, that was about maybe, what was that, like two years ago? And, uh, and he was cool, I mean, he showed love. Um, the artist that I had booked, like, paid him like $300 to show up, so I didn't even have to pay. Um, but, you know, he's about his money. Um, he was, you know, a big fixture in the scene. I mean, yeah. it, it seemed like everybody, everybody had respect for him. And, um, I mean, I never had a problem with him. He was always cool with me, so. Um, yeah, rest in peace, rest in peace, Mike. Man, that's, that, that was crazy. That was, I was I was chilling with her, and she got a text message from her friend talking about uh, Lansky got hit, and then we we're like, is he dead? And you know, they're like, yeah. I'm like, fuck. Like, you know, it's just it was hard. You know, it's it, rough, man. anytime any uh, anytime any like of our like brothers in the music community you know get hit it's bad and that was right after like the whole tornado and yep. the kkk rally i mean it's like you know bs comes in threes just like death comes in threes seems like you know so i mean we've been this city's been through a lot in a couple of weeks yeah we we don't record we don't typically record podcasts right away yeah to cover certain like topics we want them to be able to last for people to for listen sure. to years but it the tornado man it yeah. really devastated this city and certain Completely. areas of this city. Yeah, it's gonna take for it's gonna take a long time for people to come back. Yeah, cause like I was uh, I was recording a song. I was recording myself in my room, and um, my mom comes in and she's like, "There's a tornado warning. We gotta go to the basement." And I'm just thinking, "Oh, there's a tornado. It's Ohio. Like Same tornadoes either. come and go." And then you know when once they started. Uh, um, once I started like watching the news and seeing like what was really going on, I'm like, oh. And then when I got up the next day and I really like went out and seen, I mean, it looked like we got hit by like, th like bombs. Like that's what it would look like if like we were to have a war with Korea or something. Like it was sad. That's exactly what my father-in-law said. He he said when he was in Vietnam, he said walking through some of the area um, in Vietnam looked like some of the footage he saw in Dayton. <sighs> I, I mean, it's crazy. I'm surprised that we don't have more FEMA people down here. Yeah, man, that, and, and you know, that's that's why you really can't ultimately trust the government. You have to trust your community exactly. more than you trust in the government. And I will say that the community stepped up way more than I thought that we were going to do. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, as far as people um, giving out, um, you know, food or, you know, just donating and stuff like that. I mean, it's... It's crazy, and I'm just I'm just blessed that my street didn't get hit with anything. Um, but we, I mean, we did. We were out without water for like three days, but I mean that was nothing compared to some so even some of my friends who's you know like you know roofs caved in or you know trees falling on their house or you know them having to climb out of windows just to get out of their house. You know, it's I mean I wouldn't I can't imagine. How do you feel about those looters? Oh, that's that's so messed up, man. I, 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 I can't believe people are really that heartless. I mean, I can, but, I mean, it, I mean it didn't surprise me, but I'm just like, really? Like, this is 
this is what we're doing. <laughs> like, yeah, man, you're taking you're taking advantage of people who are down on their luck. Uh, at, yeah. at the worst time, nobody's gonna have sympathy for you, man. Like I, I get it. I come from East Dayton, so I get it yep. that some people have to do certain things to yeah. survive and struggle. But man, to at to, that point to take yeah. from people who are also struggling with you is really, really low. It's you really know? low when you could get together and build something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you could put your head together, brainstorm. You know, I mean. It's, it's, I mean, it was a crisis. It was a real-life crisis. People should have really came together instead of thinking, hey, this is a perfect time to go rob whatever, you know, because they owe me this, this, and this. Like, nah, like, these people lost their lives and their well-being, and y'all worried about robbing? I mean, that's the Dayton mindset, but, you know, it's, it's messed up, and I wish that, you know, it didn't have to be like that. Yeah, dude, I agree. Um, so we're we're reaching the end of the podcast. Can you so tell me, man? What's what are you excited about for this summer? What are you any releases? Anything yes. that, that's going on? Okay, so uh, yeah. So um, as far as music, I'm working on my uh, my new project. Um, I'm gonna drop a mixtape and then I'm gonna drop uh, an album at the first of the year, like maybe around my birthday, January sixteenth. But I'm gonna drop a mixtape um, here this summer, probably July, maybe August. Um, I'm about halfway done right now, and I, so I just need to start the uh, the promo process and picking the single and shooting videos. So I'm just in like the the, the beginning stages of, of this project, and um, um, just happy with uh, with like the six, seven, eight songs I have uh, recorded right now. And that could change. I mean, I could delete all the songs and make new ones. I mean, I'm very picky and very. Uh, I don't know. I have to have everybody's opinion about it. Like, I got to play it for at least, like, ten of my homies before I release it, you know. So. Yeah, dude. I feel it. I but, feel I'll, it. but I'll definitely be releasing a single here next week. So Nice. It's called uh, No Deal featuring my homie Loud Water. So cool, it's man. It's coming up. Uh, it's awesome. Any uh, shows you're playing or anything? Um, I'm trying to set up shows for um, my mixtape release. Um, so I've been talking to Blind Bob's, Jimmy's... Uh, or eleven, um, and a few other places, um, just to, just to see. Um, I'm not really active right now as far as uh, promoting for shows because I had gotten a car accident in uh, in January, so I'm still trying to uh, get better from that. I broke uh, all my fingers on my left hand and Ooh. broke like four ribs, and it was bad. So what happened? Where where was it? Um, it was on Salem. Um, I was driving home. It was actually New Year's Eve, and I wasn't drunk, wasn't intoxicated, nothing. Like, I, driver came and tried to get in my lane, so I like kind of swerved, and they kept going, so I had to swerve more, and I lost control, and I hit a pole. Damn. Yeah. So totaled my car. Um, you know, was in the hospital for a couple of days, and so that kind of just really took it took a hit on this year because I felt like I lost like six months of it. But yeah, for sure. I'm just gonna go extra hard on these last six months and. Um, make up for lost time well man i'm glad to see that you're doing podcasts i'm glad to see you sure. you're still making music and you're still out there celebrating the community yes and uh, i salute you sir i salute anybody who does content locally um just to showcase what you you got going on and showcase the city um do not think of it as a competition oh no amongst yourselves. that's why i reached out to you I was, yeah because i feel like this was you know, it's organic because we've already... Absolutely. Yeah, and um, there's another podcast, uh, Open Gym. They yes. Kinda, they they kind of yeah. do, like, what, what what we do. And so uh, we're we're going to be doing a, a, a collaboration podcast where he's going to come over and uh, we're going to collab. So, I mean, like like I told him, it's not... Like in, like you said, it's not a competition. We should all link up and, and work together. I've always been like that with music, so why not be like that with, you know, my podcast? Yeah, I, mean, I plan on having those dudes on as well. I have much yeah. respect to those guys. It's, yeah. it's so nice to see people covering the hip-hop scene mm -hmm. and covering people locally. Because, to be honest, that's how I kind of did my research and started finding out about people. Just one person. Oh, that person introduced me to somebody else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. All right. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll end it on a song of yours, okay? Okay, that sounds All great. Right. Uh, do you have one? Oh, on me? I don't have one on me. No, do you? Uh, I can I can edit it in later on. Okay. Um. You can do uh. You can do box featuring.